Pagani, responsible for some of the fastest yet luxurious cars in the world. But originally, the man behind Pagani was a Lamborghini employee. But when Lamborghini crashed his first creation and refused to see his vision, he quit and made one of the most iconic supercar brands of all time. Let's dive into the story of Horacio Pagani and see how a simple countryside engineer fought alongside F1 drivers, clashing with the biggest names in the industry. But before we get to all that, let's go back to a small Argentinian village in 1955. Horacio Pagani was born from Italian immigrants that fled to rural Argentina. And ever since he was a child, Horacio just wasn't like the other kids in his neighborhood. When he was 12, instead of playing sports, he made model cars out of wood and scrap metal. He was obsessed. He felt a sense of pride knowing his forefathers came from Italy, who frontlined the car industry with brands like Lamborghini, Ferrari, and Maserati. This fueled his obsession with cars as he went on to earn a mechanical engineering degree and got a job with Renault, designing and developing Formula 2 and 3 cars. Renault was impressed with his insatiable curiosity for cars and his unyielding work ethic to improve whatever came his way. These same traits would not only turbocharge his career, but also land him on the razor's edge. But we'll get to that later. Legendary Argentinian racing driver Juan Manuel Fangio worked alongside Horacio at Renault. They both came from Argentina and shared an unmatched passion for cars. As Fangio got to know Pagani, he quickly realized that his talents couldn't be wasted there at Renault, so he endlessly wrote letters to the best car manufacturers in Italy. He had great relationships with the likes of Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Maserati, and wrote a ton of letters imploring them to take on a man of such talent. This was a dream come true for Horaccio, and with his newfound backing, he did the unthinkable and moved his entire family to Italy, even though he didn't have a job yet. Horaccio just bet everything he had on himself, all so he could be available if he did get a job in Italy. Meanwhile, he took odd jobs just so he could carry on feeding his family. It was a time of great turmoil for the Paganis because they had no idea what was going to happen next, whether it was poverty or riches. Months later, Horaccio got a phone call. It was Lamborghini. Thanks to Fangio, Lamborghini offered Pagani a low-level position in their bodywork department. Horaccio remained modest, focused intensely, and exerted himself to the utmost in his work. By showing commitment and passion to his craft, he rose through the ranks and eventually became their head of composite materials. This meant he could create the first Lamborghini ever to be made out of composite materials, the Lamborghini Countach Evoluzione. At the time, this was technology only used in space travel, or the highest form of racing, and now Pagani could finally show off his raw talent. He took the steel space frame from the regular Countach and remade it entirely of carbon composite, which might seem commonplace today, but back then it was complete insanity. But in the arms race, to create strong but lightweight vehicles, this prototype was a revolution. But there was a pretty big problem. It was unbelievably expensive. I mean stupidly expensive. And the materials were far too new and unproven, which meant a financial risk that Lamborghini just didn't want to take. This meant there was only one thing left to do. In the name of science, Lamborghini sacrificed the Countach Evoluzione in the form of a crash test in order to prove the safety of the composite material. And the results were great. They gave tangible proof that the materials were in fact safe. Horaccio was over the moon. He saw this as a terrific opportunity to further develop this groundbreaking tech. Or at least, that was his plan. One day, Horaccio approached the Lamborghini execs and told them he needed to buy an autoclave. This was a machine that would allow Lamborghini to scale up and mass-produce carbon fiber cars, meaning that Lamborghinis would, no doubt, be the fastest cars in the world. It was the perfect plan, but Lamborghini didn't quite see eye to eye. They said that if Ferrari isn't building cars with composite materials, then they didn't need to either. Horaccio was well and truly stunned. He couldn't believe it. Lamborghini, the brand that set out to oppose Ferrari and do things differently, was now copying Ferrari. It was corporate politics at its finest, with a dash of crude irony, and Horaccio realized he only had one option. He pushed all his chips to the center and rolled the dice one more time. He went straight to the bank and got a loan for his very own autoclave. He was going to build everything himself, without anyone stopping him. It was now or never for Pagani. And after working like a man possessed, his new company, Modena Design, started producing state-of-the-art composite materials cars. Acres ahead of the game, big names started knocking his door down. Renault, Aprilia, and Daihatsu, even Ferrari's F1 team. 
but Horatio knew he would be depriving the world without a car of his own, a car more beautiful, lightweight, and capable than any other supercar on the market. He called it the F1, F for his beloved friend Fangio. But he needed an engine, and once again, Juan Fangio had some friends over at Mercedes-Benz who came to his rescue. They supplied Pagani with a M120 6-litre V12 engine out of the S-Class, and now all the pieces of the puzzle were in Pagani's hands, until tragedy struck. In 1995, right as Fangio F1 was being developed, Juan Manuel Fangio passed away. It was a crushing blow to the racing world, especially Horatio. His dearest friend, who had opened so many doors for his career, gone, and in 1998, Lamborghini threw Pagani a curveball he did not expect. Basically, Lamborghini noticed what Pagani was doing, and they offered to buy his new company. Yep, the very company that refused to accept his vision now wanted to buy him out of his own beloved project. He felt the urge to flip them off and laugh, but Horatio Pagani knew how life-changing the money would be for his family. They could finally live comfortably for the rest of their days. His heart was torn, so he asked his family for guidance, and ultimately it was Horatio's son who swayed the decision. He told his dad, forget the money, forget the easy way out. This car was everything to Horatio, it was the culmination of his life's work, and beyond money, it represented the future that Horatio always believed in for himself. Years of grueling development, Horatio Pagani's project finally appeared at the 1999 Geneva Motor Show, and out of respect for his friend, it was now called the Pagani Sonda C12 and it shook the automotive world to its core. With a slender, sexy carbon body powered by a 6-litre V12, making 400 horsepower, weighing only 2,800 pounds, every supercar maker was absolutely bewildered by this innovation, and Horatio and his team all of a sudden found themselves in the big leagues, and it was time to take it by the scruff of the neck. Believe it or not, Pagani's small factory only made five Sonda C12s, one was for crash testing, one was a test car, and just three were sent off to lucky customers. But thanks to a price of $280,000 each, it was a perfect chance for him to build on his ultimate supercar, and the very next year, he developed the Sonda C12S. What was the difference? Mainly the M126 litre being replaced by a custom-built M297 7 litre, now producing a mind-boggling 542 horsepower. 16 cars were made over the next two years, selling at $350,000. Yep, you can do the maths on that one. Horatio had done it. He'd finally given his family a good life, created his masterpiece on his own terms, and it was appreciated by the world. But funny thing is, no one likes to retire. And in 2002, Pagani fashioned the Zonda Roadster, the perfect way to cruise the streets of Monaco and listen to that V12 tune on repeat. But it wasn't all about style for the Zonda. This car was so fast, it broke the Nürburgring lap record with a 7.44 time, and that sealed Pagani's place in the supercar world, right up there with Ferrari and Lamborghini. But Pagani still wasn't content, there was still so much more to achieve. In 2009, the Zonda R came out as a full-on track-focused car, with 740 horsepower murdering 0-60 in 2.7 seconds in 2009. It smashed the Ferrari FXX off the Nürburgring lap record by 11 seconds with 6 minutes and 47 seconds. And just when you thought it couldn't be topped, in 2013, the Sonda Revolution came out. An even crazier Sonda R that now weighed 2,359 pounds and made 791 horsepower. A power to weight that rivals the fastest cars ever made. But with much regret, all good things come to an end. The Zonda was discontinued in 2019. Yep, Pagani finally put the project that changed his life to bed. The project that paved the way for carbon fiber supercars we see today, like the Veyron, Enzo, and McLaren SLR. This was the impact Horatio dreamed of making, but now it was time to evolve, or rather, go back to basics. The Pagani Utopia is Pagani's latest offering. In typical Pagani fashion, it pushes the envelope on what's next. It's promised to have no batteries, no hybrid power, no dual-clutch transmission, and no gimmicks. Just a beautiful carbon chassis with an AMG V12 making 842 horsepower. It's not a car bogged down by regulation. Just a pure expression of the man himself, Horatio Pagani. Time and time again, producing cars that are refreshingly unique to their era and igniting the love we have for the automotive world.